Awesome. Okay, and let one more guest into our audience there. Okay, good morning. Good morning, guys. Welcome to Playing to Win. I'm very excited about our guest today, uh, Laurelyn Waisaki. How would I say it? Did I very say it good. Right? Very good. Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> I always call you Laurelyn, but I'm like, you know, I want to make sure I, I say your name exactly the right way. Yeah, I think if you're in Poland, it's Wysocki. Oh, but, with a, but, yeah. Yeah, with the V, but since we're in Texas, it's Wysocki. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> I understand all these, these European names. So I'm very excited. Guests in the studio audience with us, as always, uh, I'm going to start with a conversation. And those of you on the live stream, thank you so much for uh, joining us. And you can watch this later also. But uh, feel free, if you're watching on my Facebook page, to put uh, questions in the chat, and we'll get to those as well. And then for you guys, we're happy to have you here. So let, I'm really excited about this conversation. Thank you. I'm really excited and humbled that you asked me. So thank Aww. you so much. I'm really, yeah. I'm really happy because you've done a lot more of your work with Michelle. And so I haven't gotten as much time yeah. with you. So I, I'm really excited to feature you and get your story out there. And and personally get to get to know some things because you have a very interesting background so oh well well thank you so much yeah uh, i just kept taking you know all these continuing education classes so that's how i kept bumping into michelle ah. st studying for broker's license etc and so she just kept you know hammering hey how would you like to come to kw so <laughs> right because you were at another company that's yeah. right i was at another brokerage yeah, yeah for a long time for, for how long were you there because you started here in austin right your real yeah. estate career when did you start in real estate uh, yeah um i actually kind of got a light late start as far as being uh full-time in real estate okay um I guess you could say I got an early start and a late start, and I'll explain that later. But, but basically, professionally, as a licensed realtor, I've been in the business going on eleven years. Excellent. Yeah. Awesome. Very yeah. cool. And you and you are not the um, you know the typical residential agent. You really go into kind of unique fields, and we're going to talk about land, and and we're going to talk about ranches, and we're going to talk about luxury, and that's and, and some investments too, right? We're going to talk yeah. about different things. Um, because there's so many ways to do real estate and you do residential too, of course, but I, I love that you've kind of created this niche for you. So I want to talk about that because playing to win, you can play to win in, in many, many aspects, right? That's right. That's and so, right. okay. So, so now when you came to, how long have you been here at the Northwest Market Center? So I came in September of 2019. So I'm kind of a baby. Yeah. Here. Right yeah. before the fun began of COVID, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly yeah, so. and, then, and then all of a sudden everybody's stuck at home right and it's right. like oh gosh right well right. we're really glad you did we, we really you. love having you in the office and you're, you're actually one of those people that comes in and you bring your team in and things like that so we love having you around Laurelyn. thank you so much i love being here <laughs> so oh thank you. well let's talk about um playing to win like i mm -hmm. always say playing to win is a mindset right it's all Absolutely. about your attitude so what does playing to win look like for you yeah, um, I'm kind of glad you asked me that question because that's what I kept saying. What am I going to say? What am I going to say? And I really think you have to get your mind right and your spirit right. And once you get those in alignment, then everything else kind of falls into place. So for me, um, I'm a Christian, so mm -hmm. I have to get my mind straight with God and my spirit straight with God. And then after that, everything falls into place. Not that you won't make mistakes along the way. Yeah, I definitely <laughs> have. I can tell you what not to do in real yeah, estate. I think we all could. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, fail forward, I think, yeah. is, is, you know, learn from those mistakes and keep on going. So how do you, how do you make sure that you're keeping your mind and spirit right? Like, what are you doing to make sure that that's right? If you're playing to win, and I yeah. couldn't agree with you more, what do you do to make sure that you stay in that mindset? Yeah, well, <laughs> I, I read the Bible on a daily basis. Nice. I also listen to Christian radio. So, okay, so it's so, your programming. Yeah, so it's my <clears throat> programming. So if I've had a really bad day, or if I uh, have um, all kinds of drunk monkeys in my head, <laughs> then I have to get my mind right by listening to something positive. So it doesn't have to totally be Christian. It could be a podcast with 
Gary Keller, you know, right. think like a CEO. It could be mm. listening to Facebook Live, the playing to win with Melanie yeah. Kellerman. I mean, <laughs> it could be listening to <clears throat> Ben Love running around the office, spreading oh, his know, love right? around. Oh, so he's a, he's a love yeah. spreader for sure, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. he's a love yeah. spreader. Absolutely. But it, but it's what you're putting in your mind. And and I, I couldn't agree mm -hmm. with you more. And and you think about um, when you're, when you're feeling a little not in alignment with your, you know, mind and spirit, whatever that is for you, whatever religion is, whatever that is for you, if you're not in alignment with that, it's really hard for everything else to fall into place. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I, it's like that puzzle. And the one thing that Gary Keller talks about is like, you know, the man that, um, you know, the, the son and him are going to, have you heard that? Do you remember that story? The son wants to spend time with dad that day. And the son gets up a little bit earlier than, than the dad was hoping because the dad's enjoying his <laughs> newspaper as we right. all used to read the newspaper. <clears throat> I remember those days. And, <clears throat> and he says, okay, son, you know, put this puzzle together. And he took a, a piece of the newspaper. He tore it into pieces. He said, put that puzzle together. When the puzzle's together, we're you and me, it's dad and son time, right? So the kid comes back like minutes later and he's done. And the father's <laughs> like, what? what just happened? And the, and, the, and the child said, well, dad, a piece fell on the ground. And when I bent down to pick it up, I saw it was glass. I saw that there was like a face of a man. I could tell it was a face of a man. So I turned it over and I put the man together and the puzzle came into place. And so it's that same philosophy as when you put the man together, right? The internal, the how you feel about yourself, your health, the whole world falls into place. Mm -hmm. And I think we get a lot of off, off of that. We get very busy in our businesses. We get very busy in, in everything else. And we forget to take care of ourselves, which that mind and spirit is, is taking yeah. care of ourselves. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. And, and, you know, one of the things that you always say or I've heard you say a lot, and I've actually heard Gary Keller say it a lot, you really have to take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. And I don't hear that yeah. with other with my other brokerage. Yeah. You know, it's more about produce, produce, produce. Mm -hmm. And um, while that's great, but if you don't take care of yourself, if you're broken, <laughs> you're going to implode at you some are. point. You and really so are. you need to play for the long haul. You you really do. And uh, I remember listening to Gary. It was it was from Gary, and he had all these things. It's quantum leap and. And he says, you know, if you don't take care of your body, where are you going to live? Yeah. Because he says, exactly. I'm a spiritual being having a human experience because he he's also a religious guy. And he said, so if I don't take care of my body, where am I going to live? And for years, I, I actually <laughs> so didn't true. understand that. Yeah. I fought that. I resisted yeah. that. I didn't take care of myself. I would have the no lunch thing. I would have co a cookie from the title company for lunch. I know we're all guilty of that. Right. And I would just go, 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 go. And I wasn't yeah. taking care of myself. So the last six years has life has made that be a priority for me. Yeah. Right. And I've shared yeah. some of that. So, so yeah. I, so, so a lot of my message is, oh my gosh, listen to that. That matters so much. If you mm -hmm. don't take care of this body, where are you going to live? Right. And so, yeah. so if you start now making good decisions and it starts with your mind and spirit for sure, because it's like, that's your energy. That's your, how you feel your happiness, right? Like yeah. you're, you're being yourself, you're being your true. And then, and then how you're eating, are you sleeping? Are you right? And in that taking mm -hmm. care of yourself, everything else, stress reduction. Yes. Stress reduction. We yes. have so much stress in our world. We have more stress than we've ever had. How are you managing that? And mm -hmm. when you have this, you know, when you're in alignment with yourself, all of a sudden, all of that stuff, like the don't sweat the small stuff, right? Yeah. Is that really that big of a deal? Like, does that really right. matter? So this over here really matters, but that little thing, you know, it's not the end of the world. And no. being able to manage that because that's also taking care of yourself, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. that yeah, I love absolutely. that. I love that. So I, I love that you. And do you feel like you're succeeding at that right now? Sounds well, like it's it. it's a goal because okay. I'm like you. You know, I'm yeah. up at five o'clock in the morning. I'm slamming down my coffee. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you know, I'm right. not drinking enough water and right. all of that. You know, and right. then I'm working till midnight. So right. So that was my life this okay. you know last year and this year hey, I've been trying to mm -hmm. to basically focus on you know I've got to take care of myself right. I've, I've got to because yeah. I've got other people I have to take care of as you well. sure do you have a lot of responsibilities in so, your life that's right and if you don't take care you know they're counting on you so it's not yeah. just for you if you're not going to take care of yourself do it for the people that are depending on you because most of you listening have people depending yeah. on you well okay so let's let's talk about a little bit i want to educate our listeners because mm -hmm. i always want to bring them value in the time that they're watching and i think you bring a really unique thing so you know when i think of laurelyn i think about the things that top of mind for me is luxury 
farm and ranch, land, and then also investment. So let's let's talk a little bit about that. Let's tell mm -hmm. us what, first of all, land and farm and ranch are not the same thing, right? And so let's talk a little bit about, educate us a little bit on that. Yeah, there's a lot of overlap because you could have a developer buyer, you could have someone who is wanting a pretty piece of property that they're wanting to retire on. Right. Maybe they're wanting it as a hunting property or a regular, you know, a recreational property, or you've got the developer that's looking at the land saying, okay, this is in this school district. This right. is X amount from city center. Yes, this would make a good neighborhood. Right. So, and you then know, developing so many houses on it or something, right? right? Figuring yeah. out how many lots, how many mm -hmm. houses, all that jazz. So, right, right. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's um, depends on who your buyer is, who your most opportune buyer is. And I think people don't, the residential agent doesn't realize how much more complicated and level of expertise is needed in land. Wouldn't you agree with that? Yeah, I would. I would say generally, if you're dealing with land, you're probably going to be dealing with commercial real mm -hmm. estate yeah. agents, and you're also going to be dealing with builders or developers. Mm -hmm. So it's it's definitely a ratchet up. If you're dealing with an individual and they're just wanting a recreational part, you know, right. property, right. they're looking for a place where they can build those memories with their family. Right. So it's a different mindset. Totally one's, different. One's all about the numbers. Do the numbers make sense? Right. Is, is this a smart financial decision to mm -hmm. do this neighborhood? Right. The other one is how can I make memories with my family so that it can last for as long as we own the property. And, and, and yeah, and, and, and maybe creating generational wealth for their families, exactly. right? A legacy yeah. like becomes a family, you know, inheritance or whatever. Right. Are you, now with everything that's happening and it seems like, uh, you know, everybody's moving to Austin, it yeah. feels like, yeah. right? In Texas. And we, I know, I know a lot of areas are like that, but it really feels like Austin is kind of like the attractor of everything. How it, are we able, do you have to go more further away? Are you finding that to find land and stuff these days? Yeah, I've been um, doing a lot in Dripping Springs, actually. Okay. So, yeah. Um, so you can still get land out there in Dripping? Yeah, okay. yeah. Dripping Springs, Wimberley, that um, Ranch Road 12 corridor yeah, is where I'm doing a lot. Um, so pretty I, out there. Yeah, I actually helped um, with the development of Cortero subdivision, if you're familiar oh, with nice. Dripping Springs. Um, anyway, got the project. The project was off the ground. They actually had a different realtor in place. It wasn't selling. They mm. hired me. I sold it in two weeks. And um, playing to win. <laughs> there you go. And then um, Ashton Woods is developing it. They're the ones who are going to be building homes out there. Oh, fun. So, That's so cool. I so, love that. Yeah, it was 31 lots. 31 that, lots. Okay. Yeah, that mm -hmm. were a little over three quarters of an acre. And I started cold calling builders. Okay. And Ashton Woods was closing out Saratoga Hills. So mm -hmm. it was just kind of the right time, right place. That's great. They bought all 31 lots and they're it's starting to build houses. They're going to be 750 range. Okay. And up. Yeah, it's a, yeah. it's amazing that what's happened to our, our price point in Austin and surrounding areas. Dripping's always had a higher price point anyway. They've kind of attracted a, a little bit higher of a of a buyer. It appears. It's got more of the kind of estate lots mm -hmm. where they're an acre, three quarters of an more acre, land more land, and okay. then they can build a bigger house right. and create that kind of family compound. Okay. So yeah. if somebody wanted to buy land. Uh, you think that there's still places to find land around here? I do. I think okay. Bastrop too, to be I, honest. I've heard a lot of that. Yeah, lately. I really think Bastrop. Okay. Yeah. I and do. it's not that far. It's well, 45 minutes from. Can you say Tesla? I mean, all right, exactly. Closest, I mean, <laughs> honestly, it's probably the closest town yeah. that has any kind of quality housing that's right. nice with land. That's a really and good also point. some state parks right. that are close by. Right. Yeah. So that's that's a good point. So now you grew, and we do have a business center out there. So we do a lot in Bastrop. A lot of our Keller Williams agents do a lot in Bastrop. Um, do you? Uh, so now you grew up on a ranch. You said. I did. I grew up in Delaware. Rio, Texas on a ranch. My dad was a rancher, but he was also an entrepreneur. He owned the newspaper in Del Rio and some other Texas towns. Oh, but, wow. but anyway, I grew up on a ranch, grew up I grew up rodeoing. I did barrels <laughs> and poles, but oh, I was fun. really pretty bad at it. Uh, I, but it was fun. <laughs> That's and, great. And then uh, he also owned land in Mexico as well. So, nice. Yeah. Right. 
And you also now, let's talk about investments. When you talk mm -hmm. about, you do a lot of investments. Let's talk about that a little bit. What kind mm -hmm. of, what does that mean to you? Well, I don't know if you know, but I was a stockbroker on Wall Street when I first got out of school. Awesome. And so I look at my clients um, from a portfolio perspective, and okay. I'm all about diversification. Mm -hmm. So once you get your first home underneath your belt and you've got a little bit of savings, then you know you can buy your first rental property. Right. And then you take it from there. And yeah. then... Um, you know, also you can keep um, increasing your residential value in your home because if you own it for two years and then you turn around and sell it, if you're a single, two hundred and fifty thousand is tax. Right. You know, it's it's, the tax it's protected. Uh -huh. It's tax right. exempt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then if you're a married couple, that's five hundred thousand. So yeah. there's a lot of people that are moving every two years, believe it or not, to yeah. to kind of up their game every time. Right. In their residential property. So I've done flips. I've done uh, duplexes, single family homes. Um, have an apartment complex. How did that happen of, in, in outside yeah, of Nashville, right? Yeah, outside it's in of Murfreesboro. Nashville. It's in Murfreesboro. Okay. Um, well, I have this really intelligent, very smart husband. Okay. He has a, a very intelligent, really smart brother, and they're both CPAs, and they're always looking for deals. So anyway, we... Um, found uh, basically this apartment complex that was pretty um, in sad shape with mm. very low rents. Oh, wow. And it was a uh, two bedroom, one bath. But when we looked at it, we saw that there was a closet that backed up to the water wall so we could actually turn it into a two, two. Oh, nice. With a little bit of renovation per unit. Okay. Not a lot, but right. a little bit. Okay. And then from there we raised rates. Okay. And so, how many units are in that building? 14. Oh, wow. 14 units. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it was a little one, but it yeah. was, you know. Hey, I, I don't was, know. I don't have a 14 unit building. I'm impressed. That's awesome. It, I mean, it's 14 units of income stream. That's right. Exactly. So, yeah. Let's think about that. When you think about playing to win, right? You could have one investment property <laughs> or you could have a, a larger scale where it's 14 income producing properties, right? Right. I love, I right. love that scalability. Right. Um, that's, and that's, that's, that's uh, what we're looking for. Now you also have a B and B. I do. I have a bed and breakfast in Fredericksburg that okay. I own with my husband. Uh -huh. And I, everybody said, don't do a short-term rental. Don't do a short-term rental. <laughs> but by God, I wanted to do a short-term rental. So, um, and I love Fredericksburg. So anyway, we bought a house it's now doubled in value. Wow. And it's making a, roughly about 80000 in income. Yeah, annually? It, well, just from January to now. Oh, you just bought it? No, I bought it I bought oh. it in 2019. Okay, but you couldn't have but, it open a lot of the COVID well, too, we, right? Well, we actually did have you did? it open okay. during COVID. Okay, we actually good. did. We didn't, um, there were a lot of people that were wanting to rent and get away from Houston, Dallas, San Antonio. Okay because it could be a staycation, mm, so to speak. Mm -hmm. It was within driving distance. Yeah, it close, gave, yeah, right. it gave people a break from getting out of their homes. Right. And um, it, it's, um, you know, it's it's got a great backyard and a hot tub, so you could stay within your family bubble. Oh, nice, yeah. Nice. Um, a lot of, you know, wineries and things were closed, but you could mm -hmm. still get your bottle of wine and, yeah. you know, come hang out and cook burgers. Or so do you whatever. stay there when you go out, when you go to, do you, do you stay so, at, the, at the short term or do you stay at the bed and breakfast? Yeah, well, um, it's, it's rented so oh, okay. much that I, it's oh. hard for me to You don't do want to so. interrupt it. <laughs> so actually I'm in a bidding war as we speak for another property. Oh, all experts. right. I love it. I <laughs> so love anyway, it. Anyway, well, stay tuned. Stay well, tuned. and I think that's part of COVID too, is people have really looked at, you know, where, where's going to be my getaway. And that's mm -hmm. something, honestly, you know, being a West coast person, I grew up in, you know, between LA and Lake Tahoe. We, that was not the thing. Like my grandparents had a place in Palm Springs. Like they did have a second place yeah. that we would go to. And it was just this little tiny place, but we loved that. Right. But like my, neither of my parents ever had that. So that philosophy is kind of different for me. Yeah. And when I moved to Texas, like that's a real, that's a real thing here. It is a real thing. Right. The so. get away for the weekend, lake house or, or, or Fredericksburg, whatever. I, I, so thinking like playing to win, you think about 
you could build that for yourself and turn that into an income property as well, right? It doesn't right. have to sit there empty. Right, right? exactly. And now you can't even get in it. <laughs> no, I can't even get in it. So I have to buy another so one. I have to buy another one. It's a good problem to have, right? It's a right. good problem to right. have. Yeah, exactly. Okay, cool. So then, um, and then, and then gentlemen's ranches, you work with gentlemen's ranches. Mm -hmm. What is that? What's a gentleman's ranch? Yeah, uh, different people call it different things, but basically it's up, you know, five, 10 acre tracks. Okay. Yeah. So it's a so smaller, it's like a, that's a, to you, yeah. kind of a junior ranch, like a smaller. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe okay. 25 acres on the high end. Okay. It's not like thousands of acres or okay. hundreds of acres. And so. what, what do you people want that more? Is that more recreational, mostly for five to 10 acres? Yeah. Again, that's that legacy property that I yeah. was talking about. It's okay. more, you know, for family and yeah. And build their compound and mm -hmm. what all they like to do. Right. So, we went, we yeah. had a, one of our luxury, uh, um annual retreats at one of our agents like property once mm -hmm. and it was tons of acreage like it took forever to get to the property yep. on the property yep. i'm like oh my gosh they own all this land that was something else yep. like that i didn't grow up around yep. I, it, where i was in a small town outside of tahoe that had a lot of farms and ranches but they were smaller right it was cattle mm -hmm. ranches it's different mm -hmm. right it's not mm -hmm. like it wasn't hunting or all these things that, that people do here. So, okay, cool. Yep, yep. And then, um, and then in then Mexico, huh? You have something in Mexico? Oh, or I was did. That dad? You did. Yeah, I okay. did. All yeah, right. it's sold now. Okay. But I did. So that's cool. That must be interesting buying in another country. Well, yeah, in, in Mexico in particular, you, I mean, you travel with your suitcases of cash and you're yeah. paying cash. <laughs> you're not financing in Mexico. Right, so, right. Yeah. Um, yeah, be careful. Yeah, I, I know. That's, that's what, what I've heard. That's what I've heard. By, yeah, really I, um, careful. right. I thought, you know, my my best friend in Germany, they just bought in Spain, and they oh, bought they bought a, a vacation rental. Mm -hmm. Um, and I was like, how much was it? Like, because I'm like, maybe we can buy one down the street and we can like retire there and I'll write my books or whatever. And uh, it's beautiful. Yeah. And it was already a rental, but it has a little pool, and they got it for just under a million. But the people want it out. But it's a cash flowing, and that can be their summer place. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I really yeah. didn't realize you could get that in Spain on on the island of Mallorca, if you know Mallorca, which is beautiful, and it's in the mountains. And um, but thinking like that, I just think that's a fun thing to add to your generational wealth and your, mm -hmm. you know, when you think of playing to win, it's also when you take care of your mind and and spirit. Your number one business is to yourself and to mm -hmm. your family. My husband, and I have this conversation all the time. It's like, don't forget about your family. You're giving, you know, we give to everybody else, right? And yeah. so we have to be building and taking care of our own as well, because why are we doing all this, right? right? And the fact right. that I can look up and I can say that I have multiple properties now that when I came to Austin, I'd lost everything, but I've been able to rebuild mm -hmm. that, right? Whereas I have other family members in, in California that it's just too expensive. They, they, right. they, they aren't right. able to do that. Right. right. So we are very lucky, even with the prices going up to be where we are in Austin, Texas, where you have all these opportunities to um, to invest. And, mm -hmm. and I think people let's talk about like pricing right now. So sure. people um, there's a little buyer reluctancy now. And maybe mm -hmm. it's you. Maybe it's you who's listening to this. Maybe you're a little afraid like, oh, I'm afraid to buy right now because it's it's so expensive. Like, do you where do you think? we're going to see the market going. Do you think prices are ever going to come down? Do you, right? Like what, what do you think is going on as far yeah. as from a buyer? Cause you're obviously buying something right now in Fredericksburg. Mm -hmm. um, I think you have to search for value as best as you can. I think you have to move with the market. So what was a value property 10 years ago is probably not going to be the same price now, yeah. but um I think you have to know your market and you have to know your numbers and then that way it'll help you make a better decision. But um, for us, we know the Fredericksburg market pretty well and yeah. we know what short term rentals do there and we also know what the price per square foot is mm -hmm. for properties and we also know that it makes a difference how close you are to main street and the market flats and all of that right so uh because people like walking to yeah, do everything it's a walkable right? area yeah right? people love that so you just have to kind of take those things into consideration um and then make your best guess so um for me, with my husband being a CPA, I'm pretty lucky. You yeah, know, we run through the numbers. <laughs> yeah. We really crunch through the numbers and see if it makes sense. Okay. And then we don't make an emotional buy. Yeah, that's, did you guys hear that? 
And that's what we tell our clients to don't make it. It's so hard for people to not make it emotional, especially as when it's their home. Right. But you, you have mm-hmm. to look at the numbers. You have to look at if it makes sense. Now, in your case, it's also, is it going to cash flow? Is it going to, what kind yeah. of rent can I expect to get? Uh, you know, the walkability. I love all mm-hmm. that. That's really smart. For me, it's definitely about cash flow because we also use leverage. We don't pay 100% cash for everything. Okay. Um, we're not at that point where yeah. we can do that. So okay. we also have to consider, you know, um, is our mortgage going to be covered? Right. And is it going to cash flow? And what's the appreciation rate and things like that? And how much money do we have to put in the property to make it? where somebody's going to want to rent it yeah, and exactly. live in it or rent right. it and vacation in it. Right. So that it's attractive to the consumer. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. I love that. I love that. Okay. So what about with your clients? How are you advising them? You know, what are you doing differently in the market right now? Yeah. So, um, you know, with my sellers, I'm like, yeehaw guys, <laughs> break out <laughs> like, the ship. Yeah, you know, uh, <laughs> That's right. yeah, we'll be partying in three days after we go with the contract. <laughs> Exactly, but, but uh, with the buyers, it's brutal. I mean, yeah. it is. It's yeah. brutal, and I just have to tell them, you know, yeah. it's going to be brutal. I'm not trying to scare you from the market, but here's the reality. Yeah, and you have to have your homework done. You yes. have to know your price point. Right. You have to have your lender in place, or cash. Um, you have to know what you're doing yeah. because if you don't then, you know, you're going to be really disappointed. And the reality is everybody's paying, you know, for the most part, yeah. a lot of places they're paying over asking price. Right. Yeah. And so just get that in your mindset. Right. So if you're coming from, you know, a different part of the country and you think that you can offer, yeah. you know, 25% less because that's where you're from, right. you know, think again. Yeah. And Welcome to our world. Yeah. yeah mm-hmm. Sometimes I have to let the market teach the client, hmm. you know, mm-hmm. because they won't believe me because I'm building that relationship. Yeah. And so I let the market teach the client. So we'll lose yeah. on some deals my buyers will, and then they'll get it. And then they'll understand. And then they trust. And then they do. They follow my advice and, and do what I say. Well, it's a real process, isn't it? Right. And then then they know, okay, I trust you. I've experienced it. And now I really, I really still want to buy though. And I know I need to take action because I could have, you know, whatever. And and here's the thing is if it makes sense for them, if they have, I mean, these people are moving here, they need somewhere to live, right? It's kind Mm -hmm. of, it is what it is, right? But do you ever advise people that, you know, if they're not ready to buy, that it's probably not a good time to buy? Like, do you have that conversation? Like if they don't have the cash reserves or they don't have like, like, do you set them up? It seems like you'd be somebody that would set them up for a realistic expectation. Yeah, absolutely. I, you know, I say it now may not be the time for you, but now is the time for you to do your homework to get mm-hmm. ready. Yeah. Now's the time to start paying off debt, you know, uh, boosting your savings, talking to lenders, finding out what you need to do to boost your credit score, if that's the case. Right. Um, you know, and, and then they just start doing their homework. I call it doing your homework. You do your homework. So maybe you can't buy this fall, but maybe you can buy in the spring. Right. Because you've done your homework. Right. Or I also kind of talk about a little bit about seasonality okay. because um, also kind of that, that time period between Thanksgiving and New Year's. There's a lot of people that there's not as much many homes on the market. And the reason why is because, of course, nobody wants to sell during the holidays. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. But that's also when prices get softer. Mm-hmm. So if you've got a buyer that needs to buy and they can't qualify in that upper range, maybe really think about showing them houses October 31st through, you know, January 15th. When the market is just slightly softer and maybe they can afford more at that time. Maybe it's not as and, competitive. And mm-hmm. it's not quite as competitive. Well, and, and here's the other thing, though, that the buyers can't forget is that the low interest rates have been phenomenal. My first house, I paid 16%. 16%. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just to date me here yeah. in Austin on High Ridge Drive. Yeah. Oh, yeah. my gosh. Yeah, I believe it. When, yeah. we, when we moved back from Germany, our first house was like 9%. And that was already in the 2000s, right? And it was yeah. like, 
that was, you know, it was the no doc loan, right? <laughs> you got the yeah. cash and all that. And man, we refinance this, you know, down to six. We thought we were really, you know, mm-hmm. some smart. And then it's like, you look at today, the interest rates, and, and I don't think those are going to be, uh, you know, forever. We don't know. No. We don't know that we can't predict. Right. So, right. so that is something though, that the, is a buyer's advantage if they have the, because you think long-term, long-term, what are you paying for that money? Or, you know, you're, you're being lent. Mm-hmm. It's still cheaper than if the interest rates went high and the prices came down, you're still properly in a better position. So I think right. there's that. If you have the money to right. put down, if you have the money to play and there's other options too, it's still a good investment of your money because the lending is such an attractive, right? Piece of that. Yeah. That, that, that is what's going for the buyers. And we can't forget that because that yeah. is a, a huge gift. Okay. So are you educating your sellers any differently than you normally would? Um, I still feel like if you price it crazy high, it's going to sit, yeah. you know, D- don't do that. Don't let your seller do that. I know that they're reading what they're reading in yeah. the papers or they're seeing what they're seeing on television and while yes, that's true, don't let your sellers do that because yeah. they'll sit. They will. They'll yeah. sit. Or if they just won't move and you have and you really want that client, then put some kind of clause and special provisions on the listing agreement. Okay, we'll do it your way right. for two or three weeks. Right. And then when it's crickets and we don't have any calls or any showings, yeah. then we're dropping the price to what right. I said it should be. Yeah. Yeah, so, exactly. That's interesting. Is that is that price point driven or is that is that just for the higher price point you're telling them or is that every price point? No, every price point. Okay. They, you know, sellers are kind of cocky right now. You know, yeah, they, they have the ball in their court, right? They do. Yeah. And so it, but they can't price something. Yeah. you know, $500,000 for what it's worth. <laughs> I know my neighbor you know? said it was somebody walked up and just offered me 1.5. I think I'd take it. I'm like, I could be out tomorrow. And I, and, and, but, but the irony is our houses are almost at that now in like, yeah. it's yeah. crazy. Yeah. It? So I hope he doesn't move. So I hope that doesn't happen to you guys. <laughs> Don't go knock on my neighbor's door and offer that. I like my neighbors. <laughs> yeah, but I'm, I'm serious. If you price it right, you're going to more than likely have a bidding war. But yeah. if you price it crazy, yeah. it's going to be crickets. Yeah. Have it you seen be. now what I'm hearing, like even over the weekend, people are saying, are you guys feeling a, a little bit? And, and this could just be a weekend. It doesn't mean, but the last few weeks, it does seem like this crazy 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 of the 90 offers on a property whatever that that is not happening anymore it's still it's still strong and it's still very strong but it went from super crazy seller's market to really great strong seller's market right are you feeling that too on your listings and stuff and for yeah i mean i'm seeing a little bit of softening but what i yeah. really really think it is yeah. i think people are going on vacation yeah that could be it too. you know they can they, finally they get were, out of dodge right yeah. yeah i mean they were so cooped up with oh, covid yeah. and this is their time this yeah. is their opportunity to see their family <laughs> to travel yeah. I yeah. really think people before the next school year, yeah. they're kind of enjoying life for a little bit because who knows what lies ahead I with think, this I Delta think, variant. Yes, right. I think that. I think that's a really good point too. And I and I heard uh, something somebody else like forecast that then again you're going to see it really tight and and powerful and fall again, right? Yeah. I do yeah. think people just want to break, right? They just want to break for life because they're just like they've been at home a lot of parents have been homeschooling and so just yeah. just that get i mean flights are packed flights you know? are packed flights are packed it's like and no yeah. rental cars no rental cars <laughs> do you know i paid almost two thousand dollars for my rental car in tahoe for the week i i know and i was in napa when you were that's in tahoe. right that's right and um, yeah you guys same right yeah uh no we didn't we we got a deal through greg my husband oh, of course store. you did i should have called but- you <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I'm hearing people renting oh, yeah. U-Hauls, yeah. you know, U-Haul trucks just because be... there's just nothing to rent. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's exactly. crazy. It is crazy. And and that's all all of these are aftermath uh, impacts, you know, or aftermath effects of COVID, right? And so right. I heard something about like so many of the rental companies had sold the inventory to kind of break even and not quite yeah. a business, right? Yeah. And now there's this delay and then we've got the whole steel issue and cars aren't being as produced as quickly. So it's, it's really interesting how one thing impacts so many, yeah, yeah, so many things like, you know, drive downtown to look at are the restaurants that you like still there, right? It, mm-hmm. it just, it, it really yeah. impacts us more than we think. So really 
the fact that there's so much money going on in the real estate market is, is I just think people have been, you know, hold, holding on, they've been cooped up and they're like, I want to live where I want to live. And, and now where I live really matters. I think that's really impacted people's decisions Absolutely. too. Yeah. But I do think that, you know, sellers are starting to realize, oh my God, I've got yeah. this much equity in my home. Right. It's, it's probably a time to sell. And, and it's an it, opportunity for people, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. I would be calling boomers. If, if yeah. for anybody out there, right. I would be calling for boomers and you know, just letting people know what they have equity-wise in their house because maybe, maybe sure. they want to downsize, right. but maybe they want to buy two properties. Maybe right. they want to buy their Austin property and they want to buy their Colorado or their yeah, Fredericksburg exactly. or their, exactly. you know, whatever they want to buy. Yeah. But maybe they want a house in Marble Falls or something on the lake, mm -hmm. but they've got enough equity to play with, or maybe right. they want to invest yeah. in, um, you know, duplexes or something. There's so many ways you so, can go with that. Yeah. Are, do you see a lot of overflow with your luxury clientele and your land and like all of that? Yeah. Mix? Yeah. Um, I definitely do. So, you know, one of my clients was uh, fortunate to invest in land that is across the street from Tesla. Oh, wow. <laughs> and so, oh, wow. And so, yeah. you know, 1030, I'm doing a lot of 1031 exchanges. Are you right now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah. what are they, what are they, what are you seeing people do? Are they buying, what are they buying into? Are they buying into more land or are they buying into like, like more rental properties or? Or yeah, is it just my clients different? are more land, more land, okay. more land, yeah. but, but that's because that's what I've built up. Okay. You know, but, mm -hmm. um, but I do have other clients that have, um, you know, bought their homes and, and then they've bought their first rental property. So now we're doing 1031 exchanges for oh. them to buy two, take, yeah. take the equity out, pay the mortgage off nice. and buy two. Right. So right. instead of that, um, I guess what I wanted to say is, you know, you hear that, whenever you sell a property or they buy, it's like a five-year lag be mm. before they buy again. Okay. I think my secret is that I've been able to really get to know my clients. Mm. And instead of them buying every five years, okay, we've taken care of your immediate housing need. So now let's start looking at investing. Right. And so my people are not a one and done. My wow. people are, are a one and multiple. Right, deals. right, right. It's like an adore. And I think that's a big missed opportunity with real yeah, estate professionals absolutely. is that they're not helping their clients think that way, right? Like to yeah. think about, okay, that's great. We've got your immediate needs. Your family is taking care of you. Love your house. Okay. Now what are we going to do to create some cash flow to build some wealth for you? And whether it's, you know, a, a, a fun property in Fredericksburg or it's, or whatever, or it's a, a rental income property in Austin, or it's a, you know, multi-unit apartment building. What mm -hmm. is that? And you can also buy with, if you want to take some of your investment cash out of your stocks and bonds and 401ks or, or IRAs, you can use that money mm. to buy investment property. Your IRA then owns your investment property okay. or your SEP or okay. your 401k. You right. know, it now owns the property for you. So you're still creating wealth and you're using real estate to do it, but it's also a passive income flow. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, you're just letting it, you know, basically increase, increase, increase in value. Oh, and and yeah. so if you've got a lot of money in yeah. your retirement accounts and you're nervous at all about the market, maybe it's time to diversify a little bit and I invest in real estate. I love that. And so who would they need for that besides a great agent, a, a great mm -hmm. CPA? See, you come, you're like the twofer. <laughs> You get Laurel in and you get a great CPA too, right? Well, wouldn't well, you need to say, oh, well, you need 1031 person too, but like, yeah, you need a 1031 person. And so a lot of times that's going to be somebody's trusted mm -hmm. lawyer okay. or a lawyer referral. Okay. It could potentially be a um, stockbroker or a mm -hmm. financial advisor. It okay. could be their CPA. So okay get to know those folks because I do get a lot of referrals okay. from those folks. Oh, wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Of what, what do you think your biggest niche is right now? Like if you looked at everything you're doing, what, what's the majority one, two, and three uh, of business you're doing right now? 
Yeah, um, I would say luxury land and 1031 exchanges. Okay. Yeah, awesome. That's very yeah. cool. That's pretty diverse. And they all, they're all connected, but but it's pretty diverse. Well, the, the last two questions, and then guys on uh, in our audience, if you think of something to ask, start thinking of that, and I'll open up to you. What do you think you're doing really well right now, Laurelyn? What's really working for you? Yeah, I think that I'm moving from E to P. I'm, I'm definitely living more purposefully. Oh, I'm girl. also leveraging because yes. um, as we kind of talked about health yeah. and also being so tired that you're falling yeah. asleep, you know, at <laughs> yeah. the wheel, not yeah. a good plan. Not so, a good plan, never so, a good plan. So, so leverage. So I um, am really lucky that I'm growing a team. I kind of joined Keller Williams to grow a team. And, and so I'm finally getting to do that. Yay. Um, so I'm excited about that. And you've and got leverage on the admin. You're doing it the right way. You're getting leverage on the admin side first, right? Yeah. And I now you have, have a two realtors. Yeah, you have two. And you just brought mm -hmm. another really great $10 million producer. You attracted her to your team. Yeah. Um, uh, so I've kind of, uh, well, not kind of, I've got a wonderful agent here who's yeah. Rebecca Tarazi. Maybe She's a amazing. lot of you people know her, yeah. but anyway, she is phenomenal and yeah. she is on a listing appointment right now for oh. a $3.2 million land deal. So, oh, that's wonderful. Uh, so anyway, yeah, kind Excellent. of gave her a few tips. I didn't realize she was doing listings too. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do, I gave her a few tips and hacks for her appointment. Excellent. So hopefully in, in about 30 minutes, we'll hear good news. Yeah, and, that's great. Um, and then the other person is Missy Shelton in Fredericksburg. So yeah. um, she's a luxury agent in Fredericksburg, lives there full time. She was with Century 21. Full disclosure, yeah. Compass yeah. was trying to uh, recruit me and yeah. recruit Missy yeah. and us to form a team right. to do um, luxury business in um, Drip and Fredericksburg and also Austin. But anyway, she referred some business to Compass agents and they did not refer it back. She ah. referred business to me and I did refer it back. Ah. And so she joined KW and she and did not join. You. join yeah. yeah, she did not join. I did not company. know that part of the story. Yeah, See, this yeah. is why I do play to win. I get to spend time with our <laughs> but people. I wasn't ever really interested yeah. in going yeah. actually because I, I talked to those folks. And, You're a business person. Well, I, I'll tell you why I didn't <laughs> like it yeah. is because their CEO, even though he has a mother that was in real mm -hmm. estate, and he, I guess, played at it for a little bit, right. but he was, he's always been startup guy, right. you know, he's, he's not a Gary Keller, he's a kind of Ivy League <laughs> startup guy, sure. and let's use technology to get us there, right, whereas here, yeah, everybody's been heavily Grassroots. involved in yeah. real estate from yeah. the get-go, so why do I want to join a company that I is just that. tech, yeah. Just maybe they know how to play the Wall Street game, but yeah. do they know how to play the real estate? Right. Game? And you know how to play both. So. <laughs> <laughs> I did not so. know that about the stock program thing. Yeah. yeah. And, they, and they were taking the company public and everything else. And I was just like, mm. I was like, no, they, for me, I didn't feel like they knew their core yeah. business, yeah. the management, yeah. the upper management. Right. So for me, I didn't think it was a smart move to join a company where the upper management, the CEO, yeah. the CFO, you know, yeah. blah, blah, blah. Right. Didn't come from a grassroots right. of real estate. Yeah. I, I so, think that's actually really unique to Keller Williams though. Right. It, it I is. mean, nowadays, if you look at, you know, there's a handful that maybe have people yeah. that are really came from the field, but, but a Gary Keller is, is such a, a special phenomenal. thing. It's yeah. such a phenomenal. I mean, he's impacted our whole industry, right? And to have him yeah. lean in with us in Austin is just, I mean, that's why I do what I do. I'm yeah. so inspired by, you know, yeah. that guy and what he does on behalf of our people. And that's the yeah. difference, right? It's all about how do we help our people? And you guys are entrepreneurs with really big businesses. And uh, people, people misunderstand that about Keller Williams, that we're really an incubator for really smart, talented people. Yeah. And I had heard that for a long time from uh, Michelle Busby. And I just, <laughs> Good job, Michelle. I couldn't believe that it was true until I finally, you know, came yeah. over here and I, I, it's the honest to God's truth. I mean, I y'all really, that. really do put um, realtors in a position for not only doing a big, big business, but becoming entrepreneurial and, and creating other forms of wealth and right. income and it's, right. and being an incubator, excuse yeah. me, incubator for all of that. So, yeah, I love so that. So thank you, Gary and yeah. Melanie and Michelle. Yeah. 
thank you thank and you. everybody else thank too. you for being part of it i mean this is what how it all works is we're all in this together right yeah. which is really yeah. cool um that's so okay so i love that so last question and then uh i'm gonna open up how do you know you're winning yeah um so thanks for asking that question um the uh, just this week i got a check a commission check and it was more than i made in a year when i was a stockbroker on wall street so just one check so so that was a land deal it was a land deal <laughs> It was a land deal. If you learn anything from this time, like think, think bigger, <laughs> play to win, think like Laurelyn. Laurelyn is not a high unit person. I'm She's not. a high volume person, right? Mm -hmm. And so, and, and you've done that by building relationships mm -hmm. and knowing what you're talking about and bringing value to people so that they can make great decisions with their money, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah. you're such a trustworthy kind of person. I, I'm sure your clients just love you. The minute I met you, I'm like, oh, Laurelyn's <laughs> awesome, right? You just have Thank that you. calm. You're very capable. You just come across as very capable. You're and very knowledgeable. Not pushy at all, right? It's not about this. You're not about the transaction. You're about the long term relationship, and I Absolutely. think that speaks to your character very yeah. highly. Oh well, so. thank you. I I loved Gary's um, story yesterday in the team meeting about the person yeah. who met him and then for life, even after their parents passed away yeah. they called gary to, yeah that gives me chills to to be their realtor and i just you know we really are in it it's a fiduciary responsibility we really are in it for life and yeah. so if you're playing to win you're yeah. in it for life and you're their realtor for life that's so, right that's so right take the responsibility seriously that is a that is a beautiful answer thank you for that answer that yeah it was really cool that gary popped on our city it was, I, loved it. I didn't even know that was happening I and i it. i couldn't say anything because we i was in the room with everybody and i had that echo but um yeah him and carl liebert and mark king were all on the call and gary shared that story that he'd yeah. worked with a client and worked really hard for him and they said oh well, you're, we're gonna be your clients for life right yeah and then they'd said and then so their children called him and the parents had passed away and said you're our realtor for life right yeah. like wow talk wow. about a compliment yeah right i'm wow. excited you know about and i know you're going to be there dan ihara will be here uh from kw honolulu on august mm -hmm. 26th here in the northwest market center if you want more information let me know about it but he's talking about i hope people understand what he's talking about and you get it right away generational wealth investments mm -hmm seniors like there's so much in all that 1031s right knowing how to move money and understand that and um so i'm really excited to have him here three hours you're going to really yeah. enjoy meeting him he's, yeah, he's a lovely wait. person yeah i can't wait he said i asked him like you know how covid's been for him and he's like what's well, great i've been surfing more <laughs> i'm like imagine that imagine doing this i mean we're very lucky in austin but hawaii wouldn't be too bad either would it right right <laughs> well maybe your next income property there Maybe you go. We'll go in that together, right? There, there you go. go. There you go. <laughs> All or right. Spain. Or Spain. I do. I'd be okay with that. Okay. Yeah. Me too. I'll let you know if I find something. Okay. So, so Silish or any of our guests uh, in our audience, any questions for Miss Laurelin before we wrap today? Give them a minute to mm -hmm. unplug. Yeah. Hi. So, yeah, I have some clients who are interested in land and I've never done a land deal. So can we lean on to you for your help or suggestions, you know? So you have people that are starting to want to buy land, Silas? Yes, yes. But I have no experience in that and yep. I want to see if uh, I can get some help and guidance from yeah, do you ever partner up with agents at all on land absolutely. deals and stuff? Absolutely, okay. and, and I work with referrals and things like that too. So yeah. absolutely. Because I know a lot of like people that don't have the knowledge, it's really good to have an experienced agent involved because land is so much legal, right? It, and then you can like, yeah. like, like, can I just learn from you? And then you're, you know, you're, I'm watching you do it, and you know, you're kind of working out a deal with each other. Um, but there's a lot to learn in that, right? It takes yeah. it takes a while. Yeah. So, well, yeah, I can so. connect you guys if you need me to, Silas. Yeah, thank you so much. Absolutely. He just pleasure. finished his first year in real estate. Nice, way, way to 20, go. 24? Yeah, 24. 24 transactions. Nice. That's nice. Yeah, nine way million. Way to go. Way to go. I'm super proud of him. I'm super way to proud. Go. He got yeah. really into the uh, new home market. Real yeah, quick. yeah, yeah. So he's got a lot of, a lot of builder mm -hmm. inventory, but he found a way to help them win. Good. Isn't that cool? That's so now cool. you're already getting to land. Look at that. No time you'll be doing some other cool stuff like land. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, that's I'm cool. hoping it goes well. Thanks. Okay, thanks. I hear a background noise. Okay, any other questions before we wrap from anybody in the studio there? Looks like we're good on the live stream. Okay, then I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up, okay? okay. So um, first of all, I wanna thank you. Absolutely, for your My time. Pleasure. I love this this almost hour with you. <laughs> you pleasure. are just a joy to be in business with. You thank are you. just a woman of integrity. And uh, I love that you are like a, a very humble person. Thank you. Thank you very much. You know, that quiet humility. Yeah. And, and it's like Ben Love has it too, right? You can, it's important to it's me. I would important. rather my walk, you know, rather, I, I would just rather my walk speak more volumes than my talk. Yeah. If, you know, if that makes sense. Let my actions yeah. speak volumes. I, I And you do that so well. It's funny. Um, last night I was, you know, we're still... I have a lot of back end stuff I'm still working on in the market center. And uh, so I put Wonder Woman on. <laughs> you know, the Wonder Woman, I put yes. the, the, the 1984 one on, right? Just to have in the background. I can see you spinning with your cape. Right? right now. I know, right? And then I've got like the in lasso your... of truth and all that. I've got my bracelets <laughs> always. But but I I love that movie because she reminds me of that. She was like, you know, at least my little, my mind and my head is, it's about courage and it's about mm -hmm. doing the right thing and not, you know, mm -hmm. it's never about yourself. Yeah, absolutely. It's, and, and that's how you are. You know, ne it's never about Laurelyn. It's about what can Laurelyn do for the people she serves. And you are a beautiful role model of that. And it's an honor to be in business with you, my dear. Oh, thank you so much. And thank you for this opportunity. It was really a lot of fun. Oh, so much fun. Oh, but before we go, yes. I have a backpack challenge. So Oh, the backpack oh. challenge. Okay, let's go. Okay, so what is okay. the backpack challenge? We're raising backpacks for... So you tell them for okay. Angels. Austin what? Angels. Austin Angels supports kids in foster care. And that was our big Red Day project mm -hmm. where we raised $47,000 in two weeks to to support 472 kids in foster care and why we're so passionate about this is we have a real homeless issue in in a well we love kids too right so it's a perfect combination but we really have a homeless problem in our city and when we found out that about 50 percent of homeless kids or 50 to 90 percent of it's like it's a really it depends on who you ask they say it give you a different answer we're in a we're in foster, foster care. care and it's kind of a broken system so austin angel supports these kids and families in foster care. And we've got kid, people that are volunteering to be mentors and all this stuff. So the, the, we're not just doing that on Red Day. We're going to be doing it multiple times through the year. So the latest is this backpack drive. So we have a we have a goal to hit 150 backpacks by July 30th in our lobby here at the Austin Northwest. So, so what's heard, your challenge? I heard Ben love You heard it. Ben. <laughs> so he challenged, who did he challenge? No, there was somebody first. Yeah, so Mimi, Mimi, Mimi Bond. Was, Mimi Bond right. was at Target. And she called. I called her and said, are you here? Because she's helped me. She brought Austin Angels to, to my life, right? right? So she said, I'm buying backpacks right now. And then she texted me. She said, okay, I just bought 20. And so then Ben's going to do 30. Ben said, she's doing 20? Okay, I'm doing 30. So I'm going to do 50. Woo! Oh, I challenge somebody else. Let's see who should I challenge. Oh yeah, uh, Victor Nino. I, cha Ooh, I Victor challenge Nino. you. I love it. Tag, you are it. That's amazing, right there. Is like, yeah, that's incredible. That's incredible. Thank you. Yeah. Thank yeah. you for that. We're gonna have so much fun with this, and and think of all these kids that get a get these brand new, you know, backpacks for school. Right. Absolutely. They deserve it. They, they deserve, deserve it. to feel special. Absolutely. So. Hey. I'm really happy to have you in our world. You're a very thank special you. person. So thank you, Laura Lynn. Thank you guys thank for you. watching. Bye, everybody. And we'll see you next week with, I've got Polly, Coach Polly Campanaro next week. We're going to talk about scripts and mindset next week. So we'll see you then. Okay. You're <laughs> in for a treat. As you know, Paul is absolutely amazing. He's the cold calling cowboy. Oh, oh <laughs> he is. He is. You better believe it. I love it. I love He's it. Oh, awesome. Thanks for being here. Thank you, Laura Lynn. And thank we'll you. see you soon. Bye. Bye, guys.